Welcome back to the Tavern YouTube. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers to you. So I have been in a dynasty kick today. I want to get back, back to my roots, back to the channel roots. I love me a good mock draft and I love me a good redraft mock draft. And I have not taken my uh, redraft prep super seriously yet. Uh, this is going to be the week where it really starts coming together for me. So, uh, you know, I did have, uh, dynasty mock drafts back in the streets and uh, we are doing uh, with 11 Super awesome people. Uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, a redraft. One quarterback, three wide receiver, two flex, PPR. So a little bit different. I'll do some half PPR, uh, two wide receiver drafts a little bit later on. Uh, it seems like the three wide receiver, two flex got slightly more popular in the last year or two. And it's what was mostly requested. So that's just what we're starting with. Um, but when we do these, we'll we'll, we'll vote and we'll do a little bit of both so we can prepare for all sorts of formats. I am drafting the one. And uh, let's get into it. So CMC goes off at the 101. We're seeing him uh, went at uh, 103 earlier today. So I, I am taking McCaffrey at the 101. Completely agree. Things hold the talk with CD and Tyreek coming off after that. Bijan Brees, I've seen them go a little bit back and forth. Uh, that's interesting. And seeing where they go amongst the wide receivers is also quite interesting. I. I have been rather enjoying starting with Bijan or Brees, and I definitely do agree. I do kind of like them over these other wide receivers. Um, so now we've got the first real decision between Jameer Gibbs and Puka Nakua. Pretty close for me. I am such a Jameer Gibbs just truther, though. Um, I I think he could he could be he could be pretty dangerous this year if, if the right things go his way. So I'm going to start with Gibbs. I also really love going hero RB. Um, I haven't done a ton of zero RB just yet. Um, we're going to, we're going to have to get some more practice, get some, some lists of kind of our targets and how we would do that a little bit different. Um, but that was close between Gibbs and Puka, but I'm, we're going to go with Gibbs honestly, because I just love him. And I do think if a few things break his way, um, yeah, I think he can break fantasy in a Christian kind of way. Like his upside is pretty ridiculous. Uh, but I think Puka's a great pick there. I would have taken Puka over uh over um well Puka and uh Puka Wilson and Monra are pretty close for me. I would take a Monra over Garrett Wilson, Garrett Wilson over Puka, but Puka's right afterwards. Uh so back here, a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so interesting to note, I took Gibbs at the 110, and I wanted one of the next four guys to come back, none of them did. That that's really tough. Wow. Um. Okay, this is interesting because I kind of want to just take Saquon Barkley here over everybody else. <clears throat> I'm gonna go Saquon. I it's close between between Saquon and Drake London for me. There, it just feels a little early for Drake London. Man, that is crazy. This is a three wide receiver league, though. I have to start three. Uh, and I think I've already made a pretty big mistake by not going to London. It just feels like between London and Devonte, it's also pretty close. I just like, I've been getting those guys more towards the late first to feel weird taking them there. So interesting to note that at specifically the 110 and how this kind of played out that I can get myself into a weird situation. So I didn't 30 second picks. You just, you learn a lot because weird things happen and I don't really love this start. Um, but we'll see. It's just why it's it's a, it's a mock. It's good practice. I've boxed myself into a weird build that I didn't plan on it. I'm running back, running back in a uh, PPR three wide receiver league. So let's see. Uh, let's see how I dig my way out of this. I mean, you get it, right? Because I could I, I could have taken one of them at the two eight and I could have taken him at the two three. But. I don't know. We will see. So let's dig ourselves out. So already. This tells me that I love targeting like Patrick Mahomes, Anthony Richardson in the fifth. And there's some guys in the sixth and seventh that I like with the current setup. I probably need to take because it's all I mean, it's it's double flex. So I can technically start five wide receivers. I may end up going four wide receivers in the next five picks. Um, and that's probably the plan. The plan is probably to go late tight end. And the plan is probably to go late quarterback. Just so we can still get 
the wide receivers that we want. Yeah, I think that's going to be the plan. So we'll see what we liked. Because if we didn't take Barkley, we would have taken London. And yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll see where where the where the where that deviates. We'll do a little two players versus two players and see how it goes. So the rest of the board, uh, Kyron Williams, Derrick Henry, Olave goes at the two six. Uh, Etn after all those guys, Etn kind of moving up boards a little bit. Uh, I'm curious. I like Hn over Etn just because I think the explosive league winning upside is more so in Hn's court. Curious what you guys think there. Ayuk over Adams is interesting to me. I think I like Adams more. I'm a big Devonta Smith guy, so I definitely like this Devonta Smith over Waddle and Nico. I'm probably in the industry. I'm probably the lowest on Nico. I'm not really a huge fan of him. I think he's going to go down as not a guy you wanted to take in the third. Guy you're probably happy with in the fourth or fifth, but not the third. I'd rather have neighbors over him. So that's interesting. I do like this range of wide receiver, though, if I'm being honest. I really like Devonta Smith. I really like Jalen Waddle. I really like Neighbors. I I'm really liking a lot of these wide receiver twos. Like, in my current builds lately, I have really been enjoying. I want the hyper-premium Bell Cow Elite upside running backs because I think there's this massive group of tiers of... Yeah, they'll they'll be fine at running back. Um, and, of course, they're not going to all finish that way, but... I think the projectability, there's a big tier break, I think, between the league winning running backs and the, you're going to have to get lucky and get, you're going to have to find the, I try to think, you got to find the Chiron in that group to, and, and it might just be blind luck is, is kind of what I'm getting to. Interesting here though, is that Barkley at the two, three versus Pacheco at the three, seven. Do I really think that Barkley is like that much better? than Pacheco, James Cook. We're on the clock here, but that's something to consider. Uh, so we've already said we, we want to go late. We, we've got to get our wide receivers. We can't do Laporta. We can't do Allen, even if we wanted to. Challenges, they're so clearly the best value on the board here. Oh, that's brutal. Um, like this makes me want to take Allen, but I just can't. And I'm just going to take DJ Moore. We're going to stick to the plan. We're probably going to reach a little bit at some wide receivers here. Because um, right now, I do think Allen is starting to hit to be kind of a value here. But I've also been saying that I'm not going to take any quarterbacks in the third round this year because I think the value is just a little bit better late. And in a three wide receiver start two uh, flex, I think that lowers the importance of having an elite you know, top three quarterback, wherein if you're doing a standard two running back, two wide receiver, single flex setup, I think that's when I'm taking Allen in the third. That's also where I am taking the tight ends a little bit earlier. I'm probably not leaving around five of that one. I'd reach around four for the right guys in some cases. But when I can start three wide receivers, double flex, I think running backs and wide receivers, particularly wide receivers in PBR, are going to be more valuable and it's going to devalue the uh, the quarterback position. So we're going to lean into that, probably end up with, uh, you know, QB 10 through 12, tight end 10 through 12, and hopefully love everything else about our team. This is Josh Allen at the 4-3, though, and this is stupid. Uh, yeah, I can't let him slide. I, I mean, I just can't. I just can't do it. It was all in the, the, the plan was definitely not to do that. The plan was probably to, I mean, just look how far I have to reach for my guy here at this point, though, which is what's crazy. And I think Trey McBride is pretty fragile. I don't love it. So, yeah. I mean, the wide receiver I would have taken, I mean, DK Metcalf is ADP, but realistically, so it would have been DK Zay Pickens. It probably it would have been reaching for DK though, which is gross. So I'm not going to do it. Curious what you guys think though. Allen versus the tight end there. I just feel like Allen, Josh Allen in the fourth round feels pretty good. Um, with the potential, I mean, taking Allen there too, it also easily opens up the Keon Coleman stack, which I really like. I don't think I'm going to get Kincaid in the fifth, which 
Remember when I said we're going to take tight end and quarterback and we're going to punt him super late and we just didn't? So stay water, my friends. We'll see. Um, we'll see what comes. Obviously, Kincaid is now a stack that we're prioritizing. Uh, we are also going to go ahead and prioritize little Keon Coleman a little bit later on. Um, it's nice with uh, with Josh Allen, too, because there's like I just like taking a, you know, a little easy, you know, Khalil Shakir or uh, I like Curtis Samuel actually over over Khalil Shakir in, in most cases. But Keon Coleman goes late enough. We're probably going to have to. I think people are a little too aggressive on him in redraft, but I could be wrong. We'll see how the rest of this round go. Uh, so Cook goes next. Uh, Rashad White over Cook. That's interesting. Probably correct in PPR, but I'm not sure about that. I, I think the competition for White's a little bit better than Cook. Inefficiencies. Uh, Tampa Bay offense is worse than Buffalo's. Cook had less touchdowns than he might otherwise have. Uh, I'm taking Cook over White all day. Um, I'm not saying White's bad. I'm just saying he's a riskier pick with less upside than Cook, in my opinion. Um, Metcalf goes. I mean, he's at ADP. You got to do what you got to do. He's still fine. He's got upside. He's great uh kelsey over andrews i agree i do think i do think kelsey should go there like the mix and pick uh mahomes going to the fourth i usually see him go in the in the fifth um i, I think that's just this is probably more realistic he's got better weapons should be better offense this year uh pickens love the pickens pick here though i think pickens anywhere in the late fourth i really really enjoy him i think he has on a, on a game by game upside i think that's why i love him in best ball because his game by game upside is still elite um it's just his floor is also pretty rough which is which is where the, the hesitancy can come in um walker going after camara after mixon which is interesting um but this is redraft i'm used to dynasty where it's sort of uh pacheco cook white walker all very close walker typically ahead of them because he's still pretty young uh so we've got some aging vets go off well we didn't take flowers given that he would have nearly come back to us so what are we looking at now uh, we're still trying to go wide receiver. That's where we want to be. What's in the board here? But uh, Kincaid did come back to us. So the Kincaid Allen stack is looking pretty attractive. We're just, we're going to, it's the opposite of what we said we did. We said we were going to go after Barkley. Four out of our five next picks were going to be wide receivers. And our next two picks were <laughs> quarterback and tight end. So, oh boy, strap yourselves in. Let's see. Of all years to be a little thin at wide receiver, I'm not saying this is a bad year for it because there's a ton of rookies I like. There's just a lot of later picks that I like. Um, I think we're going to be thinner than we want to be for sure. So we're going to have to hit on a lot of these picks. See how it goes. Come on. Yeah, it's, I mean... Also, Anthony Richardson making it uh, to the late fifth, Stroud going before him. I mean, I like Stroud. The dig stack makes a lot of sense. Even if it's an auto pick. <laughs> um... um which is it is interesting there. Anthony Richardson is just, just too late for him. So, Hoagie, you're getting uh, a, just a, a ridiculous gift here, I think. I don't see any other way around it. Um, and so now I just have to take a wide receiver here. So it's uh, Rome versus Jordan Addison. So here's the tough part. Rome should be lower, I think. But I love him, and he won't come back to me. And I just absolutely love this guy so much. I'm a massive Chicago Bears guy. Can't take him, though. I have DG Moore. Completely forgot. So we're going to go down and take our boy. Addison. I do think he takes a pretty big step up in the early season with Hawkinson. Probably not at his best. JJ getting the forced doubles. I think Addison's going to have a high target count. Like him a lot there. Would would have really enjoyed Rome, though, uh, if I didn't already have more. And I need to stop taking less more so I can get more Rome later on. I, I just think he's... He's going to have a rough first couple of games, I think. But I think by the second half of the season, bit Keenan gets an injury. I think I think Rome's going to have a bigger season than most people are anticipating. So who we open comes back to us with our super high T start. Grabbed our stack. We definitely want some of these wide receivers to come back to us. Um, we would love some running backs and quarterbacks to go off the board, which they are. A rich finally goes and he's a ridiculous value. And this is just why I hate taking Allen 4 3 and why I mean I'm gonna have to learn to just let it go. Because I can get a rich or Joe Burrow in the sixth round, two rounds later. That just that might be the better pick. It might be. We'll see. So guys, we want to come back to us. At running back, we're still gonna need more. So guys, we like we'll just flag a couple of them that are 
little bit under the radar that we really want. Zach Moss there. Wide receivers, we hope, come back to us in a couple picks here. Um, love me some Calvin Ridley. Would love some Lad McConkey. Keon Coleman, we're close to the turn, so fitting in, uh, getting that Keon Coleman locked should be quite nice, too. I'm huge on Deontay Johnson this year. Hollywood Brown should be fantastic, too. I like Xavier Worthy, but I think Hollywood could start the year off pretty spicy. I don't think I'd take Hollywood over a seasoned Ridley in that offense, though. I actually really like D-Hop, too, in redraft. One of Ridley or D-Hop has to be a really good pick. Um, over Deontay, maybe not over Ladd, though. We'll see. So if we can, and then we can get uh, Coleman uh, on the turn, that would be really great. So I love this grouping of wide receivers a lot. It says I'm actually reaching for them, though. Um, yeah, I mean, I do like Tony Pollard. I'm not taking him here. Just doesn't fit the build. It's just interesting. That's where he goes in ADP. All those wide receivers seem to have pretty great upside, but. And it's full PPR, so this is interesting that like Zemir White's this high up the board and Pollard. Um, definitely a spot where like right now I feel less bad about the running back heavy start that I had, just kind of looking at the board, not loving a lot of what's there at the other positions. So let's just go grab our wide receivers. Uh, I think we're going to start with... So we could go Lad Keon. Yeah, because Ridley went off and so did Hollywood. And I just not I'm not reaching enough for I like Deontay a lot, but we're we're gonna go with the big upside of what if what if Ladd really just takes over the wide receiver one role in that offense. This is kind of risky going with Ladd as my wide receiver three when I don't know how a season's gonna start, but word from training camp's already pretty good. The safer pick is definitely Hopkins and Deontay, right? If I could just go slap those guys. But We'll stick with the youth. So hopefully, uh, I'm not going to get sniped because the auto pick. He has to take Coleman right here. He'd have to take. Yeah, so I think we're fine. And we get to take our, our key on Coleman. Nice. All right. So I think I want. I need one more wide receiver pick that I feel really good about, which would complete my entire starting lineup, and I would feel good about it. Um, and then we we are officially dug out of this mess. Yeah, I'm starting to feel a lot better about our start. Yeah, this looks this looks great. So let's talk about the board a little bit. We'll go back to our Addison pick. So after the sixth, so great great values. Richardson in the sixth, Joe Burrow in the sixth as well. The six seven. Oh, I think that's fantastic value. Um, I don't me personally seeing Ingram and Kittle go in the sixth. I don't know. I just don't see them as massive difference makers compared to like the wide receivers and running backs that are going to dry up a little bit faster than the tight end position. Given that, you know, look at Ferguson down at the eight, four versus Kittle at the six, eight, they could finish pretty close. In fact, Ferguson might outdo Kittle sometimes. So I know this was an auto pick. I'm just kind of, talking talking sense here so i think it was a little early um coming back around um so that you know read then rome then worthy interesting that rome goes ahead of worthy for redraft don't always see that godwin i actually like him this year i think back in the slot that could be pretty interesting and most dirt for sheet rice james connor Ramondre stevenson i think uh, overlooked and undervalued this year. I really like them in the seventh. I think that's great. Loved this whole brick of picks. Then Hollywood and Calvin Ridley. They were two targets of ours at the seven ten. Um, Ridley could have a pretty explosive year if Love. I'm uh, not sorry, sorry, not Love. If uh, if Levis hits, I think he's got all the weapons. It's going to be tough for a defense to kind of zone in on what they want to do. On. A lot of weapons on offense. They just have to make it work. But I, I I like what Ridley can do there, and I also like what Hollywood can do as well. I mean, Hollywood has a chance to be kind of like Christian Watson, but when he was good, not injured. Um, and with Mahomes, I don't think he needs a ridiculous target share. I just think as long as he can stay healthy, I think he's going to have his opportunities in a game by game basis. He just might not have a ridiculous. He's not going to have a super high like targets per route run, I don't think. Um, but that offense just might be good enough for everybody uh, is, is what I think. I think it's going to lower the huge upside oh, cases for each on, individual dude. player, but I do think he eats pretty good. Um, 
Pretty happy to get Lad at the 710, though. Loving that. Uh, Eckler, I don't think he's left for dead. I think what he's going to be able to do on third downs, and obviously I think he's got much better health this year. I think he's being forgotten. I, I, I think he's a value here at the eighth. Love Deontay. Obviously, I love Coleman as well. Um, Ferguson, the eighth, is, is perfectly fine, too. Christian Watson. Again, look at some of these values. We got Kyler Murray as his first quarterback. In the eighth round, we got eighth round Kyler Murray. I'm taking Josh Allen the fourth, and I can get Kyler Murray in the eighth. I just think I need to get off these early quarterbacks. I'm starting to convince myself there's just too much value later on. Brock Bowers, the eight seven. I took him at this exact pick last draft. Can't hate him. I think there's some pretty good upside in Bowers. I just it might not be enough because of the quarterback play to support him being kind of elite. We're back on the clock. We'll finish going through the uh, the board a little bit later on. We'd still like one more. Uh, wide receiver, but let's just check the running back board. So we like what's up there. Uh, Jalen Warren's nice. Tajay Spears is really nice. We should probably grab one of them while we can, because the, that is going to dry up more quickly than the other. Um, Jalen Warren or Tajay Spears. We're going to go with Jalen Warren. Um, no particular reason. I'd have to look at some correlation and some stuff. I don't have anything off the top of my head. It's just I have been favoring Spears. I don't have enough Warren, so I want to get a few more shares, balance them out a little bit. Do like some Spears. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting. One. I would I would like to see if uh, I want to do some some deeper digging on Jalen Warren versus Haji Spears in my opinion. Um, Tajay might be the better pick there, actually, too. We'll have to see. So back on the clock, uh, are the other running back that was had in consideration is gone. We're going back to wide receiver for sure. And what we're going to do, we don't need to restack with the Khalil or Curtis Samuel. We're going to need someone to play when my entire Bills stack is gone. Uh, A.D. Mitchell looks kind of nice. Uh, I really want to see what his upside is, and I think I'm going to take him. I know he's just, you know, top of ADP there, but when I look, the other guys around him that I would take. I'm um, not taking the other Bills guys. I mean, at this point in the draft, we're just looking at pure upside, and I do like him as being one of the more pure upside guys. So really balanced our draft. I got our third running back for a little bit of, uh, and, a, and a good one at that that I feel great about. I've been fine with Warren or Spears. The more that I think about it, I think Spears probably gets more touches. because, Well, I, I considered... Warren isn't the backup. He's just, he's going to get less snaps, but he does get more passing volume. And I do think Russ does like to dump off more than most. I just think Tajay showed a little bit more, but I'll have to look into that a little bit more. I will. I'm not even sure. I just, I'm starting to think Tajay just might feel like a clear cut, better player to take, a little bit younger. I think he might be a little bit more explosive. I think he's going to get more touches. I think Warren could just potentially push Najee for the job by the end of the season is what I'm saying. So like the ultimate upside case is more. And more so. so we'll see. Offensive ecosystem, I think might was might do it for me, though. And Tennessee just might be a better offense than Pittsburgh. But they're both pretty bad, right? So we'll see. Um, last time we were going through board. So we got back around. Still seeing a. Uh, 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 it's all pick with Zach Moss. 8-9 turn. I'm just seeing him being a little... He's being devalued in a way that I don't think is right. I mean, Nick Chubb went before him, and we don't even know if he's going to play football or how much football he's going to play this year. Um, Trey Benson should be good at some point, but Zach Moss is a starting running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. It's, it's uh, He's just getting a little, a little disrespected there, I think. I like Devin Singletary. Uh, JSN finally goes off the 9-4. Schultz Edwards love love. I don't think you need to take love right after Murray. I think he could have waited uh, a little bit there. Brian Robinson. We like him. We got to our pick. Jalen Warren Spears goes right after <clears throat> Jamison Williams over at the nine twelve. Uh, we, we did like, did like the Jamo pick and also Hawk falling, falling to the 10. That's pretty nice too. Look at that. Herbert almost in the 12. All right, back on us. Let's see what's waiting for us. Don't really, we don't really need to think about backup tight end, but we'll solve that in season. Maybe we'll take him as a last round pick. Let's look at uh, wide receiver running back. So 
This is probably a Charbonnet, and we can almost be done at running back. Yep. So a Charbonnet standalone value plus in case of an injury, very, very high upside. I'm um, not really thinking right. Dobbins, more of a, f a flyer for later on. I mean, I like Ty Chandler. Lloyd's okay. Jaleel's nice. You know, I might get Marsh a little bit of Marsh on my end. Some Tyrone Tracy in there. Uh, Roshan. Now we're starting you guys out like late. I'd like to get one of those guys a little bit later. And so wide receiver seems pretty one, two, three, four wide receivers in the wide receiver position seems really dead. This is a problem. A little bit of a problem. Um, so the thing is, Jerry Judy doesn't have to be terrible. I've kind of been liking him a little bit. He is he could be something. Does Mike Williams have enough upside in New York if he's healthy? Can he do great things there? I guess I'll take him. I don't love it. I need wide receivers. It was a guy that's produced before. I kind of hate Mike Williams as a pick, but I'm going to take it because sometimes the picks you hate are picks you need to make. The fact is, if he's healthy, he is a red zone weapon in what should be a pretty good offense. I just hate that Mike Williams in that life. Goodness, that pick feels gross. You know, I made that pick because in a previous draft, I took Jerry Judy here, and that felt even worse. And I didn't want to keep reaching down to like Josh Downs, which might have even been the better pick. So that's just gross. And in the future, we should maybe look at like what. So what else is around this pick that that we would like better? I mean, it's late, so I get it. But I have to I think this is for me there in redraft, particularly round 12 starts this gross. I need some better targets around here. I don't have a, as many feel good picks. And ADP obviously in sleeper is way off, so I need to get my other ADP a little, a little, a little more figured out. Come on, if Dahl goes, Palmer goes, Josh Palmer, lo love the, uh, love the Charger picks there. Jahan Dotson getting slept on a little bit. I like him as kind of a post hype sleeper. I think he could be pretty nice. Gabe Davis a little bit forgotten. Maybe he does something in Jacksonville. I mean, I like the upside of the pick. Just remember that's why we didn't take downs because we were reached for uh we didn't reach, we just took AD Mitchell a little bit earlier. You know what's crazy is Stafford is probably gonna be a really nice quarterback this year, and he's free at this point. So stay so good pick so far. Rico, nice pick. Taking a little flyer on JK Dobbins. I like it. There's a lot of just like so so picks here. I don't nothing super stands out to me though. So we know we have our RB targets. Not like much sore than Mike Williams. Like much more excited about a Ricky Pearsall. Oh, come uh, much on, more excited dude. about a, a, a Jalen Polk. Love both of those and Mark. Love all these picks a lot more. And I'm, I'm probably just going with one of them. So I have four RBs, and I'm glad I took them where I did because I can kind of stay fragile. I think the ultimate upside this late in drafts is at the running back position. When someone this late hits, they hit a lot harder at RB than wide receiver. That being said, I do think the two biggest values here, if I can get them both, are going to be at wide receiver. So we're going to start with Ricky. We're going to see if we can wheel Jalen Polk, and then I'm going to feel very, very good about why man of course of course Jalen Polk goes right away I probably should have gone Polk I was trying to go ADP I think Polk has the biggest impact this year if a trade doesn't happen over at San Fran but we'll see I still like Slick Rick better so we went with him um does that put us thick enough at wide receiver that we're good we can probably figure that out later on I think yeah like QJ could be a thing maybe Demario Douglas. Um, I, I would like to get my upside picks at running back in, though. I don't think I'm going to get them both, so I'm just going to go with ADP. We're going to start with Tyrone Tracy. And I would love to wheel 
uh, Roshan Johnson. I really, really like Roshan this year. I think he does something. And I don't think Q Quentin Johnson is a bad pick. I don't think Tatavian Wicks is a bad pick. I think QJ over Wicks, just because if one hits, I think the upside for QJ, if he really gets things figured out, is higher this year. Obviously, I'm not going to be huge, having already drafted Latin Conkey. Yeah, I mean, is that, is that his only quarterback? I mean, see, look at that. Yeah, Stafford could be a top eight quarterback. He really could. Threw in a billion touchdowns to the league's best wide receivers. With a pretty good running game and a defense. I mean, he's, he's got his quarterback for free in the late 14th. That's awesome. You know, it's interesting. Instead of taking Tyrone Tracy, I probably could have gone to Mario Douglas. Because my, like, well, I lost Polk, so I got, I could have grabbed Douglas. Maybe it would have been a little bit better. We'll have to see. All right, what do I want to do? And Roshan goes. I think it's kind of why I went Tracy, because I knew Roshan would go, and I don't really love anything else here. It's more waiver wire fodder for me. Uh, I don't need a backup tight end. Don't need a backup quarterback. We'll solve that another day. Um, I do want another wide receiver, though, someone with some upside. Um, so I think we're looking at... Malachi Corley is interesting. I know training camps have been, they've been kind of steaming up. Uh, uh, what's his name? Xavier? Is that his name? Right, we'll pull it up. So, yeah, Xavier Gibson. Yeah, I was right. So, looks like uh, Xavier Gibson, according to camp reports, is kind of making a push for Corley. If Mike Williams is ever injured, Corley just ends up being better, and I think Corley does some things in the return game. Could see what happens. Wandale's a nice pick here as well. Um, it's really between Corley, Mims, and Wandale for me. Maybe I'll take a few shares of just an interesting guard. I'm going to go with Corley. My brother went to WKU. Uh, you know, I, I'll, we'll, we'll go with a little, little, little WKU love. Grab me some Corley. I like him more as a dynasty asset since I think he'll be better next year than this year, but I won't discount that Aaron Rodgers and that offense could have some fun with him here and there. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. So here's how we did. Quarterback, uh, we're going with Josh Allen. And then we've got our super heavy testosterone build with Jameer Gibbs, Saquon Barkley at running back. Got to feel good there. Wide receivers, DJ Moore, Jordan Addison, and Lad McConkey. Little fragile, but we have some upside in there that I that I like. We got the youth. Um, got the Dalton Kincaid stacked with Josh Allen. Kincaid over, over at my tight end. Feeling very good about that. Have the double stack with Keon Coleman in the flex, as well as Jalen Warren. On our bench, we've got Adonai Mitchell, Zach Charbonnet, Mike Williams, Ricky Pearsall, Tyrone Tracy, and Malachi Corley. Just a quick recap of kind of how the draft board kind of fell to us. We took Gibbs at one, took Barkley at two. Didn't wasn't sure how we felt about the Barkley pick, but we were going to experiment with it. Took DJ Moore at three. Plans after three rounds were to take a bunch of wide receivers, backdoor ourselves into some running backs later on, and basically get a free quarterback and tight end in the 12 plus rounds. And then we just decided Josh Allen's a value in the fourth, and we got our stack in the fifth, and so we abandoned those plans. Went heavy wide receiver. Th oh, yeah, four out of the next five picks, so we just delayed our four out of the next five and grabbed Addison, McConkey, Coleman, and Mitchell. So a lot of young upside sort of dart throws. Addison, we know, is already kind of there, but that's three rookies uh, outside of it. So could be a little boom-bust situation, and I might be just trying to skate into the playoffs, if anything. Uh, backstop to RBs with Jalen Warren, Zach Charbonnet, uh, grabbed, uh, uh, my, my aging veteran, hopeful producer, Mike Williams, man, I need him to be healthy at the start of the season. Ricky Pearsall for after a trade happens and maybe some incidental value here and there. Tyrone Tracy, just in case he actually gets the starting job and certainly could. And Corley was my late round dart throw because we need a lot of wide receivers. We need extra uh, opportunities to hit. We'll see what happens. I think I probably, I don't know. Interesting. It's definitely a draft that if things go well, it could go very, very well. Uh, it might have served me better to just get rid of the Josh Allen Kincaid idea entirely, stick with the original plan, 
since the original plan probably would have had me getting a quarterback that I really like really, 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 really late. Um, yeah, I could have probably taken a quarterback later on at like the 10th. I mean, I, I would have seriously considered uh, Jaden Daniels, Tua, or Purdy all at the 10th. Uh, I would have felt very good if oh, Herbert would have gone before me. But yeah, there's just a lot of guys a little bit later on that could have been interesting. So anyways, thanks for tuning in uh, for another mock draft. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Um, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do think about getting that. Just a quick click. Uh, might not be the biggest deal for you, but it's a huge deal for me. Uh, so I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider dropping a quick sub over there. Uh, check out some of my other videos. Check out some of my other playlists. Uh, I have a lot of Dynasty content that I'm very happy about. Uh, collaborate with some, some very cool people over at the Get Right uh, Fantasy Network. Please check out their channel as well. And come check us for some Friday Night Mocks. And we're doing Monday Night Mocks on uh, Underdog as well with, uh, with Rasta over there. So for all of us over at the Get Right Fantasy Network, thanks for, for hopping in. Uh, please hit me up on Sleeper if you want to, you know, hop into more mocks with us, do anything along these lines, check out our Sleeper channel, just do all the things. Thanks for stopping by, check out some more vids and uh, more coming for you this week. Cheers.